Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. At this time, the case is ready to uh, begin our selective grinding, refinement of the occlusion. We have added a little more uh, plaster. Make sure you have enough for strength. And you've noticed that the borders are free. We haven't embedded the borders of the denture in the plaster. And you can see a little bit of the asbestos that we've used for a blockout in the anterior portion. Now, it is important that we remove all the wax. You'll notice that the wax has been removed from the teeth, so it does open uh, the sticky wax. But it's important that we make sure that there is no residual wax on the tooth surfaces themselves and that the teeth are dry because the um, uh, articulating paper uh, ink will not stick well, will not adhere to the teeth if they are wet. So we're just about ready now. There's one other important thing, and that is to make sure that the, that the uh, condylar determinants are, are correct. And uh, to do that, remember that uh, we're not using the 20 degrees that we had on the immediate denture, but the 30 degrees for these teeth. So set both condyles again back at 30 degrees, set your Bennett's angle at 15, and make sure that the um, incisal table is removed from the 20 that we use for the immediate denture back to the 30 degrees. But of course, this isn't as important now because uh, our incisal guidance is actually now determined by the teeth that have already been set and processed. Now, in selective grinding, we can use various methods of marking the teeth. And uh, we have a couple of choices here in this course. One is a, uh, a typewriter ribbon material. Um, it's very thin, silk, it's impregnated with ink. It comes in both uh, black and red, and I guess blue. We have red, and we will make this available uh, to you, small pieces available. Uh, another uh, material that you are probably accustomed to using is the uh, Minol type of articulating paper. It's a blue. Unfortunately, it's a little thicker than the other, and uh, the thicker the paper gets, the more inaccuracies we have when we adjust the occlusion. Now, as we discussed in lecture, the first thing that we do is loosen up the articulator so it can go into the excursions and move the articulator back and forth to see if we have any tooth that interferes in all positions, and that is uh, working, balancing, and protrusive. If this happens, the tooth has probably moved during processing, and we will have to adjust the cusp tip. But at this point, when, when we adjust the, uh, um, the teeth in centric occlusion, we do not grind cusp tips. Now, as you can see, uh, these teeth balance fairly well right now. So with it, we have minimal adjustments to do on this case. Sometimes, uh, either because of carelessness in the setting or undue processing changes, the teeth uh, do need uh, more adjusting than this. Now, you can see some of those teeth going through working, for instance, that do not touch. The first molars, for instance, uh, do not touch as they go through, and they, and they should. I'm probably getting uh, an excess um, contact somewhere that has to be identified. So, for the first step, as we have just discussed, and as is in your handout, let's lock the condyles so that the case can only, the articulator can only swing up and down on the axis. To make sure that they're all the way down, I'm going to raise the, my pin just a little bit so the teeth touch first. So as the first step, let's see what contacts or interferes or does not contact in our hinge movement or centric occlusion. Now, I think it's going to be a little difficult to see on these porcelain teeth, but some teeth I'm not getting marked. For instance, the first molar, there's no mark. Um, there's a heavy contact. There's a heavy contact on this portion of the second molar. And I'm not grinding. All I'm grinding now are uh, ridges, central grooves, marginal ridges, 
and possibly inclines, but not cusp tips, because we want the, the height of the tooth to remain for our working and balancing. Let me try that once again. And this time I'm going to use the blue paper and see if I can get a better marking for the uh, to show on the television monitor. That's the first step. Now this isn't actually uh, necessarily good because we get a bigger smudge mark. It's probably more inaccurate as a matter of fact. But to show here, this is our first step. And of course as we come toward the front there should be absolutely no contact in centric occlusion. And you can just tell that by eye or inspection and you'll notice that that simply pulls right out. There is no contact in the anterior six teeth. But then as we look again at the teeth you can see a little more clearly now the um, the marks where we're hitting heavy or not at all. Now you'll notice, for instance, that between these uh, two teeth right here, between the second bicuspid and the first molar, it's hitting very heavily on that marginal ridge. So that would be one area to uh, reduce slightly. And we, w we will not reduce the cusp tip that causes that. Now what I'm using to adjust these, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing on the television itself, but I'm using a small uh, biscuit mounted in a straight hand piece. And you can use whatever uh, you like as far as the uh, being small enough and fits the tooth, make sure you're not removing too much material at one time. The uh, white gemstones work very nicely. This happens to be a, a mounted green stone. We don't want to mutilate the teeth or change the configuration any more than we have to. So I'm doing this rather carefully. And the general rule to follow in this case is, of course, not to grind cuss tips, but marginal ridges and so forth. Okay, now I've ground a couple of areas. I'm going to go back to the articulating paper. And it should begin to feel more solid. If initially, as the dentures come together and the occlusal surfaces come together, it will feel a little mushy or there'll be a slight slide in there. Or it just doesn't feel solid. It's a tactile uh, thing that you can pick up by just tapping the teeth lightly together like this. And I, it feels a little more solid just after a couple of adjustments. Now once again we examine the occlusion. And here's where you have to make up your mind whether to remove or where to remove parts of the teeth. And at this point, we have contact on cusp tips, and it does feel quite solid. So I'm very close to considering that in centric occlusion, I have all the teeth contacting. There are marks on all the teeth. I have no teeth that are completely out of occlusion. And if the teeth were set properly, and I hope these were, all the teeth do contact. We don't want to reduce the vertical dimension. And, and as you remember in our discussion in the lecture, we talked about selective grinding and why it is used instead of milling, for instance. And it's just because the, we do have a selection where milling simply takes down all surfaces equally and reduces the vertical dimension quite rapidly. Once again, we close. Now, it feels very solid. Sometimes you can turn the teeth around. This won't, won't show, but I'm saying you can look at it from the lingual view. But there's a definite uh, solid sound when these tap very lightly together. If you're hitting one or two teeth initially, you'll know that you're nowhere near the, your ultimate goal. So let's consider the adjustment complete for centric occlusion. And now we we'll loosen up the mechanisms of the instrument and go into working and balancing. I think it'd be easier if we show this side first. Now, we mentioned before, if you have to drop this working condyle back just slightly for all the grooves to go through perfectly, that's, that's all right. Now, in this particular case, unfortunately, it's so close now that nothing dramatic is going to happen when we adjust these. But let's put the red tape back in, move, move the articulator into working, that is, I'm bringing the lower out toward you, and let's see where our interferences are, or if all the teeth are gliding through evenly. 
Now, of course, there might be a, an interference on the other side, too, so we have to check both sides. There might be a balancing interference. Probably not, that's not the case. The aim here will be to reduce some on the working side so the balancing side does indeed come into play because, as you remember, it was quite difficult, other than the second molar, to get much of a balancing contact with the setup. Now, that's working. Let's go over to the balancing side. And if you have an interference on the balancing side, it will probably be on the second molar because of the configuration of these particular teeth. Once again, let's look at this side. This is working. And at this time, we are, we are of course, uh, picking up marks on the other side, which is the balancing side. OK. Now, once again, I can see them, but I think I'm going to have to go to the blue paper because it just doesn't show well enough on these porcelain teeth. It's a little difficult. It's not a bad idea to use different colored paper for different excursions because the, uh, just for this problem alone, you get, sometimes you get confused as to which marks were caused by movement and which excursion. Now, we can see interferences here. And the trick is to find out which interferences cause which problems. Now, we're getting interferences on the cuspid, so I'm assuming that that is an interference, or we are definitely getting solid contact and working. That didn't touch in centric occlusion. Now, you notice the marks on the marginal ridges, or are the ridges of the cusps, not the marginal ridges, are starting to show here. And that is because they are contacting as the two teeth come through and working. So actually, what we do have is pretty good contact in all the teeth as we come through. But let's find out if we have any balancing. Now, that won't be able to be shown. I'm just going to move the case into working. As all the teeth contact, I'm looking through, and I can see that indeed I do not have contact. I'm open on the balancing side. So as remember before, on the working side, if we want to remove anything, we stay away from the supporting cusp. We stay away from the buccal cusp on the lower. But we do grind the buccal cusp on the upper, the bull rule. The buccal cusp of the upper does not maintain, is not a supporting cusp, but does not maintain the vertical. So in order to pick up some balancing, I'm going to reduce the, the height of some of these working contacts and see if we can get contact on the other side in working. And once again, we must be careful. This is a judicious process. We don't go in there with a heatless stone and just start grinding until everything comes together. Now, before we put paper in, we can just, by inspection, go into the working. And now, I'm very close to having contact on the other side. You can't see that, but I'm looking at the other side. Why? why I'm going through here in the working process, procedure. So once again, I'm going to put some paper on the balancing side, and then we'll bring the side toward, toward the monitor on in the working. The mandible is moving toward you, in effect, I'm trying to see if we have any balancing contacts yet on the other side. And I think we're picking up the second molar area. And just one more time, I'm going to try this red tape because it is a, a, a finer material. It doesn't make such a large mark. And again, I can see by this that I'm, I've got a fairly large contact or heavy contact on the cuspid. That will have to be reduced. That's probably guiding the rest of the teeth. By reducing that and some of the other areas, Hopefully, I can pick up some contacts on the balancing side. I'm going to go off camera for a couple minutes and refine this, and then we'll come back and check this side, and then do a little bit on the other, look at protrusive, and then that will complete the exercise. Now, I have done a little more adjusting on this side. That is, the, the working on this side, the balancing on the other side. And I've approached the point that when the teeth are moved through the excursion. I have a nice even movement. 
You'll notice that there's no tooth touching harder than, than the other tooth as much as you can see on the monitor. Plus the fact that the central incisor, the anterior teeth are entering in on this. Uh, I had to reduce a little uh, of the lower, lower incisor, put a wear facet on it. Um, make sure that when you put your paper in for the adjustment that it does include the anterior portion because this will be part of the, of the picture. Now at this time, I do have a balancing con uh, contacts and uh, we can show these at the end of the end of the adjustment, although it is a little difficult. But that's our aim, to have a nice smooth working and at the same time that this is happening, that there is contact on the other side. So now, let's turn the articulator around and go to the other side. Let's move, let's move the jaw into working on the patient's right. Now as it comes through, Right now, we are, we are already very close. As you can see, I have an opening in the first molar. That's not contacting too well. Now, there are interferences someplace holding this up because I am not getting contact on the other side, but I'm fairly close to it on the, on the balancing side. Now, it's an important thing to remember at this point, we're not just talking about how the buccal cusp is coming together. That, that's all we can see. But it is very possible because of these steep cusps this happened on the other, uh, when I just did the adjustment, that the buckle, that, that the, uh, not the buckle, but the lingual cusps of these teeth may be interfering and holding the buckle cusps out of occlusion. So with your paper, we also have to look at the, uh, all of the contacts, not, not just what's happening as the buckle cusps come together with buckle cusps. So once again, repeating the steps that we used the first time, and I'm not going to show much of this on the tape, but once again, we closed down with the paper, moved into working excursion for a few times. Of course, we can observe this by inspection, and if there is something, say a bouncing interference that's very obvious, that can simply be reduced before we even start this. That wasn't the case at this time, however. And then opening the articulator, we have to analyze the marks that were made. And sometimes this is very difficult. Um, one thing I would like to point out, once in a while you get a mark back on the heel and this will uh, show you that you do have contact with the heel of the lower denture and this has to be adjusted and maybe it was possibly it was over wax for some reason. Now in the anterior region we can see a contact on the uh, central incisor so we'll probably have to do a little adjusting either here putting a little uh, facet that cannot be seen from the labial here or make the adjustment on the lower tooth. It really doesn't matter, just so it doesn't affect the aesthetics. Now, on the mandibular tooth, we have a large cusp, the uh, distal lingual cusp, and it has a, a very uh, well-marked area on it, and there was a slight interference I could see by inspection, so that will probably be ground first. As of yet, I'm not picking up any balancing. Very close to it, but not picking up any balancing on the balancing side. So we do have to reduce enough on the working side so that we get a nice smooth excursion and we've reduced enough to pick up some balancing on the other side of the arch. So instead of demonstrating every uh, step or every piece of grinding on this particular case, once again, I will go off camera and complete, and complete this side. Now by adjusting only the buckle of the upper teeth or the lingual of the lower teeth for interferences on the working side, I have adjusted so that um, it glides through very satisfactorily. And also, those difficult to see it, also we have begun to pick up our contacts on the balancing side and this is the most difficult thing to do. If the other side isn't working, to have this side contact. At this point, we have to look at our last excursion, and that is protrusive. In other words, from the view that you're looking at now, when the teeth go straight back, or when the, when the lower jaw actually moves forward, what we want is anterior contact and posterior contact. Now you can see uh, that we're very close to this now. Some of you, it will become quite difficult. If you have a um, very little over jet, overbite, for instance, 
and your anterior teeth are too far apart, let it be up to your instructor to decide whether you should grind enough to get anterior contact or not. It isn't absolutely necessary that the two incisors contact. A lateral or a cuspid uh, would be okay. But in this particular case, what I'm aiming for, and I do have to do a little adjustment, is when this patient moves his jaw straight forward, that we get a nice smooth excursion as it rides up the cusp tips, as you see here. And we have most of those teeth in contact, at least a couple in the back, in the posterior part of the mouth, where the second molars and first molars are placed. At the same time, we have anterior contact, and that will be the goal. So, so this is simply done the same way. A piece of, of articulating paper of some sort is placed in, the, in, the, uh, in between the teeth. The articulator manipulated into the protrusive position and then uh, deciding, after looking at the marks, deciding what, uh, what areas of the teeth we can adjust or can grind without affecting the aesthetics of the case or any important supporting cusp of the case and make the adjustment. And I will do that at this time off camera. Now we have adjusted the interferences that kept us from getting a good uh, protrusive balance. And at this time, as, as I move the jaw forward, I do indeed have anterior contact. And at the same time, I've got good contact all the way along the, the, the occlusion. And that's what we're after. You can see it on both sides. In other words, the denture is not locked in centric. When the patient goes forward, he is not tripping on the anterior teeth and flipping the denture up in the posterior area. This gives the patient some uh, stability, and as far as the uh, patient's tissues are concerned, this is in his favor. Now, the very last step, and we want to minimize this because it can be overdone very easily, but the very last step to uh, refine what we have just done we are going to do a little milling. We talked about milling before. And we have some uh, carborundum paste. Actually, what it is is carborundum particles of very abrasive carborundum mixed up with uh, some glycerin to hold it together in a mass. And we will do some milling to refine the occlusion and smooth off some of the areas that we've just worked with. The areas can also be smoothed with other finer stones and uh, pumice wheels if you want. And we should do that because, as you know, uh, the abrasiveness of uh, porcelain after the glaze has been removed is considerable. So now we simply close down the articulator on that carborundum pace and then move into excursions no more than, well, we say a dozen rule of thumb. That means don't do it for 10 minutes uh, because if you do, then things start happening and you're losing uh, balancing contacts and you're losing support. You can actually reduce the height of the whole denture by over milling the denture. This is just the final step in refining the occlusion. And of course, we're grinding these in to the condylar determinants now. This, this is not the exact movement of the patient's jaw, so we don't want it to do too much at this point. Now that's plenty. At that point, uh, this is water soluble, so at this, at this time I will remove the uh, black material, the carborundum material from the teeth, and we'll take uh, one closer look uh, at the uh, completely adjusted case, and then I'll show you how to remove the denture itself from the mounting. Now the milling paste has been removed simply by water and a brush, and at this time we have a little smoother excursion. And as I move it into working, you can see how nicely the, how the teeth come through and uh, there is balance on the other side of the arch. And then when we go into protrusive, the same, the same thing. We're going straight back. The cusp doesn't touch. I'm not concerned about that because actually every other cusp tip does in this case. Now, all of you won't have every other cusp tip touching, but we want to make sure that at least uh, two or three of them do in the posterior part of the mouth. Okay, in the protrusive. Now, say I'm hitting an incisor. I have incisor contact and I have many contacts in the posterior part, so I am uh, happy with the uh, protrusive contacts. Now when the selective grinding has been completed, and for this course we will, we will tell you later how uh, these will be handed in, but they won't be handed in on these mountings. So the next question comes up, uh, and it will, and clinically also, is how do you take the denture itself off of the, the mounting? 
Well, if you have blocked out properly uh, and have not buried the borders in plaster, it's quite easy. Simply go all the way around, and I've already done this, I've gone all the way around the border and made sure that that is clear. And then, by just a little prying, and don't bend the denture because they can break, but this should come off fairly easily. Now this is the kind of mounting you have. There's no lubricant needed for this. Don't, don't lubricate the denture, it's not necessary. And you can see where the blockout was in the anterior region. And as a matter of fact, uh, don't destroy this yet. Uh, we may want to use it further. This should fit back on uh, absolutely perfectly, exactly the way it was, and be able to even work further with it. Now remember, we have one more exercise to complete, and that is finishing and polishing the complete denture. So it does have to be removed from this mounting for this next exercise, when we will take the denture you have in acrylic resin and go through the procedures of finishing and polishing the denture. So this completes the exercise in selective grinding. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.